Peanut, it's working. I have an itch. Peanut, I need to start making an effort to put you into the videos because people get mad when you're not in it. I would be mad too if I didn't see me. That bug is going to kill me. Whatever it is wants me dead. Just do it. Just get it over with. Get away. Hey guys, welcome to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. In this video, I'm gonna be installing my trim. So I'm gonna be going over in great detail things that are unique to my tiny house, which could potentially be helpful in your build or your projects in the future, maybe. I'm a visual thinker, so I'm gonna give you some visuals. Okay kids, today in class, we're gonna learn about blow jobs. That's what my window looks like, you see it, kinda? Okay, you with me? Oh, I went too big. Bam, so that would be my window, roughly. I mean, they're all different sizes and shape and stuff, but I need my trim to do certain things on this. So there's two numbers that I need to keep in mind. A quarter inch, which is gonna be the reveal that goes around the window, so my trim will just sit on top of this three quarter inch casing that goes around it, and there'll be a quarter inch exposed. And then three and a half inches, which is the width of my trim. So these are two numbers that are important that I need to keep in mind for my mathematical formulas later. Now this is gonna go for pretty much all trim on windows. Unless you do 45s on your trim, um, then this method that I'm gonna be doing is for this method that I'm gonna explain. That doesn't make any sense. So this bottom piece is gonna go just like that. It's gonna stop, stop here. This, the side pieces are gonna go right here and then the top piece is gonna go all the way and then there'll be a piece of drip, drip cap on top. Now, when I do this, if I measure inside to inside on my frame, I'll need to add a quarter inch and then I'll need to add three and a half inches to get this length. This one, I'll just need to add that quarter inch. I don't need to add the three and a half. And then this one, I'll have to add a quarter inch for the top because I want that exposure right there. I want a quarter inch. And then I'll just go to the bottom of my sill and I'll run three and a half inches long. So this one's gonna be three and three quarters longer. This one is gonna be a half inch because it's double the quarter inch on both sides. This one is gonna be seven and a half inches longer. So it doesn't matter what order you do this in. So I'm just gonna measure this one. Now all these windows are, all these sized windows are pretty much the same. So. Let's call that 35 and an eighth. It's not really, it's a little under, but I'd rather 18 and 5 eighths. So now that I got those two numbers, 35 and an eighth, which is my top, and 18 and 5 eighths, which is my bottom, I'm just gonna add these numbers to them. So I got some of the numbers for most of the windows. I'm gonna go around and check every window and write down everything that I need, and I'll cut this piece off and I'll bring it to the shop with me. So I don't have to come back out here and check anything. I'll have all my stuff in there and I can just work, get it all done, and bring out completed frames, put them on, and then yay. But it's really important to check all your numbers over and over again, you know? It, you, you measured it once, measure it twice, you did your math and you added stuff to it, check it, check it, check it, check it, because last thing I wanna do is go in there, cut a bunch of stuff and come out here and have it an inch short or something like that, which that almost happened on one of these numbers. This one, 22 and 3 eighths, it almost cut them 21 and 3 eighths. That would've screwed, screwed a lot of, the, lot of stuff up. Sucks that the other windows are way up high. Do you see it? Like I gotta, how am I gonna, how, it's so high up there. Like, how am I gonna get up there? I gotta get a ladder. This is almost as bad as busting out a table saw. God, gonna have to disable the comments on this video. Oh God. You know what, go three eighths. Oh my God. Oh, it's okay guys, it's okay, I'm all right. So each window is gonna need four pieces. So if I take my nine windows and times it by four, I get nine, 18, 27, 36. I'll take that 36, I'll come back to all my lengths that I have figured out and I'll take all those numbers down. I wrote down, I need five at, I need 14 at. I'll take all these, add these together, and I should have 36. If I don't, then I screwed up. But I didn't screw up, because I had 36. I did it right. I feel like I get a booger. Right, right, right there. Get it? <laughs> you wonder why you're single. I'm kind of not anymore. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, kind of committed to a relationship. 
I might be seeing someone. So there is my list of lengths and stuff that I need. I just need to remember what is what, which I kind of remember because I spent so many hours on those things. So I'm gonna go to the shop and start cutting these up and getting this ready for the project. I don't have enough trim. There's no way that I have enough trim. I still need to get the corner trim and the corner trim is $33 for one piece and I need eight of them. Yeah, join me on Patreon, you know? You see this thing behind me? This is a uh, this is a second tiny house build that's happening on Patreon. I mean, you can be you can be a part of that. I did did just end a record month on Patreon, which is great. Thank you guys for supporting over on Patreon. Very cool. So I was just in here looking at the math numbers I did, and I don't know what the hell happened there, but 19 and an eighth, but I refigured that number 35 and 5 eighths, so that's fixed. So let's get back to that mess that I'm doing. Now I don't trust any of the mathematical calculations, mathematical calculations that I did, but I went back and rechecked them all. Should be good, except for these. I gotta double check that. It should be good, shit. So I'm gonna be doing cedar shakes on the siding and then i've got the mahogany windows and i want a really rot resistant um, maintenance free house obviously i'll have to come back every year to two years and reapply a finish to the the siding into the windows but that's something that i'll enjoy doing so that's not a problem but the trim i don't want to paint trim every year i don't want to put white paint on it so i bought some pvc trim this stuff's really really expensive it is 25 dollars for a 12 foot section i've got eight pieces right here that was 200 dollars, and i'm 99 percent positive that that's not enough to do it uh, i bought what i could afford at that moment uh, i will be going back and probably buying either I, I figure at least another two if not four pieces but it is a pvc board and it is four quarter it, I think the technical term is called five quarter, but that's stupid. It's it's four quarter, which four quarter equals one inch. Four quarter. Do you get it? I think you should get that. It's pretty easy. Four quarters equals a dollar. So four quarters of an inch is, is an inch. Makes sense. So I am going to start chopping this stuff up. So I got my chop saw ready to go. And my table saw, I'm going to move in here in a little bit. We're going to do some ripping on this stuff and pocket holes, whatever. So let's get started. I've got my lengths all tacked up there and I'm going to start cutting this. I'm going to set up a stop block so I can make repetitive cuts easy. So I need five at 35 and five eighths, 14 at 22 and three eighths. I'm going to try to cut complete window sections so I can put them all together. If I have to go and get two or three pieces, then I only have to make maybe these windows right here. I'm gonna try to get these done and these done. So let's key up the uncopyrighted music and do some work. But while you're listening to that uncopyrighted music, I'm gonna listen to some stuff that's a little bit better. So I got most of my pieces cut. I am one 12 footer short. Um, a little bit of advice for you guys when you're doing a laundry list of things to cut you know I had 40 inch pieces I had 30 inch pieces and 22 inch pieces uh, start with your biggest numbers and cut all those pieces because you'll end up with cutoffs and those cutoffs right here these could become the 22 inch pieces or your shorter pieces that you need I took a 12 footer and I cut all my 22 inch pieces out of it when I could have gotten a 40 inch piece out of it and then did you know, a 30 inch and a 22 inch, and that would have been the best way to utilize my material. So always start with your longest numbers and work your way back. I don't know why I did that. I did it because I figured I would use, I would be able to finish most of my frames and then I would have to get another couple pieces. I knew I was gonna get one or two more, but now I'm gonna have to get three total. I did go today and pick up another two, figuring it wrong, but I need to get another one now. That just makes no sense. It's kind of confusing, but just start with your longest numbers and go from there. Now I did assemble one piece completely just to test it out. See if my theory in my head was going to work. Excuse me. I'm trying to film in here. You want to settle down a little bit in there? Is that possible? Peanut, get him. I will get him. You go hard. You go hard. I'm coming in there. Peanut, easy. Don't need you to get kicked again. No, I cannot take it. They're ruining the shots. 
Okay, thank you, peanuts. Thank you for making the videos. I still need to put on this like really fancy drip cap thing that'll go on here. It's also gonna be PVC. It's gonna really make this thing really sharp looking. I'll need to clean these and all that stuff, but this fit perfectly in my bedroom window. I need a bunch of these and whatever. I got a bunch of stuff to make all of them. Now, one thing that I knew was gonna be a problem, which was a problem on my door, is that things aren't perfect when you're working with trim. And so you need to come up with solutions to make things better. So when you buy this trim, it's completely flat on both sides. There's a smooth side and a wood grain pattern side. I'm gonna go with the wood grain. I felt like that was a good rustic look, kinda. So I'm gonna go with that. But if I were to put this up against my window and my plywood on my house, if there is a slight variation or something in there, it's gonna throw this off and I'll end up with a gap on both sides. Now when you buy like baseboard trim or trim that casement trim that would go around a door on interior, they put a groove into the back of this. It's about 16th to an eighth inch deep and it leaves about a half inch on both sides perfectly flat and then it goes in and then they take out all that material. And that way, if it rolls side to side, it'll still work. It'll still make this piece tight on the top and tight on the bottom. So it's a, it's a mistake fixer. Since this doesn't have that, I need to put that groove in it. So if you see here, I put a little groove in the back of this. Now this won't be seen because when I do my siding, it's gonna cover that up. But I did it in all these pieces, all the way down this, all the way down that. And I also am gonna be joining this together with pocket holes. So before I put that groove in it, I need to put the pocket holes into it, then put the groove in it, then I can screw them together. So this is my pocket hole jig maker thingamajiggy. It is the Porter Cable 560, I would call it. If you're gonna Google it, just Google Porter Cable 560 and you'll find this model and everything about it. Uh, the research I did, I really wanted to get the Craig, but the more research I did on it, the more figuring you need to do to use that tool, where this one really takes out a lot of the guessing games. The, the Craig jig, you need to adjust this collar right here on all your joints, on different thicknesses of wood. This thing, you set it in and you lock this right where it's at. And then this plate right here moves, which would adjust how deep your drill bit would go because there's this thing that swings down on the bottom. It's gonna hit that wood and it's gonna stop it at the correct depth. So all my side pieces need to get just two in the top here. So I'm gonna put, put the piece in. So first thing I do is lock this down and then push this piece into my stop. Make sure I'm square on the bottom. Push this down and twist it and lock it. Now if I release this handle on the bottom, it's gonna take it off so I can take the piece out. But this has made this tool set up for all this thickness of material that I'm gonna be using. So I can lock it in. On the side here, it's gonna tell you what size screw you need to use. Uh, it says I need to use an inch and a half. I only have an inch and a quarter, but it's right there next to that line. So I think inch and a quarter will work well. And then I have done tests with the different screws. There's coarse thread and fine thread. The coarse thread works much better with this PVC. Uh, the fine thread might work well on a hardwood, but not for this. So I'll be using coarse thread inch and a quarter with a fat head on the thing. So once that's set up, this jig's good. This drill bit, I don't need to make any adjustments to. So I can just take my handy dandy drill, put the drill bit in it. Don't need to adjust the collar like I said. These two drill holes, you can adjust them. There's one at zero and then you can adjust it to wherever you want to put it. You know, there's different settings, three quarters, one inch, inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths. I'm just going as wide as possible on both of them. And it's good to go. So I'll put this in, start my drill. When I push down, this plate is gonna push down. And when it pushes down, it stops it at that certain point which will make this drill bit go to the correct depth. That was it. There was no calculating that I needed to figure on that. That's done. And then I'll do the same thing to the other one. Good, I can unlock it. And I've got two perfect pocket holes. Now, some people will say pocket holes are a really weak joint. I'm not really concerned about this joint having pressure on it. This is just to hold this joint together. There's no force gonna be applied to this. So it doesn't really need to be a structural joint. I just wanna keep the joints tight. I will be incorporating glue, some PVC glue into this joint so that the over time, because this stuff expands and contracts, I want this joint to stay tight and become one with the other piece. So on the side pieces, I just need to do the top 
and the bottoms need it on both sides. So I'm just going to go through this stack of lumber. Lumber? It's not really lumber. Somebody might might argue you on that one. I'm definitely a huge fan of this tool. It's very simple. I mean, once you get that initial setup, which literally takes seconds to do, just put the piece in, push it tight to your stop that's on the other side, lock it in, and you're good to go. I would recommend putting the drill bit in till you hit material, then coming up just an eighth inch, starting your drill, and then going. This drill bit will end up eating out these these little collars that it rides inside. So I don't want to. I want to prolong the life of this tool. So I'm going to try to be gentle with her. I'm surprised they haven't been sued by Craig. It's kind of like the saw stop getting sued or suing Boschich for making a saw stop. I know you might be thinking, how much is this thing? Two hundred dollars. Holy shit! Man, I just whacked that with a freaking baseball bat. Oh, that was violent what I just did to you. I'm s I didn't mean to hit you. Don't call the cops, please. I decided that I wanted these pieces to connect this way versus this way. Uh, I just feel this is more likely to blow out here if I were to screw into it versus the other way. So, I don't know. I just feel like that's the stronger way to do it. So, I'm going to do it the stronger way that I feel like it is stronger. Yeah. So I'm going to put that groove in the back side of these pieces. So I set my table saw up to a like what, like 5, 10, 8, 8 degree angle. 8 degree angle. I did a test on a scrap piece somewhere. I forgot where it went, but it's gone. And then I put the feather board on just because I felt like that was something I should do. And probably, I don't know if it's needed or not. So I'm just going to run these through. I'll do it one way and then the other way. The blade is set to a little over half the distance, just a literally a sixteenth over. I don't want to create like another V where water can get held into. I just want to be able to remove all that material. So I'll show you on one piece. Careful, danger, danger, stranger, danger. So you can see that I have that V. It comes right to the center. I'm not over removing material. And I have about a half inch. Personally, I think this is a little too much. I'd rather have about a quarter inch to three eighths. So I'm gonna move the fence over just to see here. What's a C hair? You're going to have to Google it. I won't tell you what a C hair is, but it's something we use in the construction industry and it's not appropriate for anyone under the age of 18. So you can see that's much better. I've got a little less than a quarter, maybe a quarter right on the sides here. So these two points will touch and none of this will touch on either the window or the plywood. So if there's imperfections, it'll be all right. And I already have my pocket holes in too. If I would have done this before I did the pocket holes, I wouldn't have been able to do the pocket holes. I probably could have, maybe, probably not. But this is good. This is great. This piece is ready to get glued and screwed together. I really like that camera angle though. That is a really nice camera angle. Are you in the shot? Yeah, you are. No, lean over and show your tits. It, it'll help with views. I need tits in my video. Come on. Give me a little. What? I'm kidding. That was a joke. Like I said, I'm going to be gluing this together. Now, this company right here, which I'm not going to show, makes a construction adhesive. They were kind of mean to me. I wasn't really a fan of the company. I actually contacted them, and they were not, not a fan. Understandable. So this is just like a PVC cement. So I'm going to just apply it to this joint right here, and then butt it together. I have no idea if it's good or not. I did do a test the other day on this piece right here. Let's see how well it did. So this was glued up. The screws are out. I can't get the other one. It's stuck in there, but let's see how well. Wow. Wow. That's good. Damn, that's good. I didn't think it was going to be that good. Ah, that was ridiculous. That's crazy. Look at this. Here, I need to do this so it, it focuses, but you see how it took out material from this board right here? So that's good. That's good. That means the adhesive is stronger than the actual board. So that was good. That was a good test. I will definitely recommend using this type of adhesive. This is right next to, if you go to Lowe's, most likely Home Depot too. It's going to be right next to this product the PVC board so 
I think it was only like seven bucks or something like that, so I'd recommend picking some up. And let's let's be generous. Now they have clamps and all this stuff to make this all per tay, but I'm just gonna use force in my hands. So I just gotta clean that joint up a little bit, and that is good to go, ready to get installed. Now I have a lot of that to do, kinda. Not really, I already did most of it, but. And then I ran out of piece. Drama, drama, we don't need drama. Drama's what makes views though, Dan. We need more drama in our videos. Fuck this project, okay? Excuse my language, but money pit project. So let's jump ahead and we'll go install these window frames, finally, yay. Long project, not for you though, for me though, all projects are long. Let me know about these longer videos because I just had a 29 minute video go up and I can't see the analytics yet, so I don't know if people stuck around for the whole thing, but I like them. I can, I can kind of watch, I mean, I can make 15 minutes. I can watch 15 minutes, then I get bored. 29 minutes, I should have broke that one up into two. But then you get people bitching. And I haven't had anyone bitch, so that's good. Except for that, my one troll. I got one troll, man. He's hardcore. John Griffith, I love you, man. Calm down. It's okay. Nobody can see your comments, okay? You're blocked. Leave it alone, bud. Just leave it. I said, you were one load your mother should have swallowed. That, were my, that was my words. I didn't say I wanted you dead. It's not an unreasonable request. I'm like, let's... Seriously, though. You okay, bud? You all right? You want to talk to somebody? If you want to talk, man, right there in the comments. We can talk. We can have another conversation. It's okay, bud. Everything's going to be okay. So I'm going to apply a little silicone to the back of these right on that inside and outside edge. Now, I don't want to do the bottom piece, but I do want to put silicone on the bottom of the sill so water can't come back in. Oh, I never checked to make sure it fit. So I'm just gonna make sure I got the consistent reveal around the window. And then I'm gonna put a nail every eight to 12 inches. And then this is the drip cap that's gonna go right here. And that'll help water come away from the, the house. My siding's gonna sit right on top of this. This is also PVC. I'm just gonna put a bead of silicone right into that corner and then I'm gonna place this down on that piece and I'm gonna slide it back into the wall check my sides I want that silicone to squeeze out and up I didn't want it to come down out the front and for a little added protection I'm just gonna take some tape this is like Tyvek tape but it's the cheaper variation so that turned out pretty nice I might come back and do a little more silicone here I'm not 100% happy with it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to help support a fully fan-funded tiny house build, I have a Patreon page. The link for that will be in the description below. With just $1 a month, you'll get advanced access to all my content, as well as some behind-the-scenes type uh, videos. There's about six of them on there right now as of filming this, but this video won't be up for a few months, so. Yeah, so by the time this comes out, there might be more. There's probably going to be more. And those videos are titled with the pre-title as Just For You. And those videos will never be released onto YouTube. It's just for my Patreon supporters. So if you want to check out some extra footage, extra videos, and get advanced access to all my content, uh, just $1 a month. That's it. One small coffee. If you like the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up and make sure you leave your great knowledge down below in the comments section. And I will see you on the next video. Is that right? I missed something. Subscribe, comment, like, Patreon. I got them. All right, so now some interesting facts about this project. I spent close to $400 to make this video. And that's just in materials. The PVC trim, I did make several mistakes, which I explained to you guys, but I ended up with a lot of scrap boards that I couldn't do anything with. And uh, I could have made better decisions with my cutting. This drip cap, it was $15 for one piece. I needed three of them to get what I needed to do. Uh, so that was another added expense. The nails were $20. And, and just the 1x4 PVC, was, it was expensive. So 
between going back and forth to Lowe's and doing all that stuff, I spent $400. Insane. Sorry, Patreon supporters, that you've been waiting. Oh, you know what? I need a thumbnail. That's what we'll make right here. I never take my time to make a thumbnail. See, but I, I need to put the text in there, so I need to I need to be over here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So I'm right on the side. Ooh.